In this video, I'm going to be solving another question related to similar and congruent triangles and also angle properties of circles. So this is one concept, one question, sorry, which involves these three concepts, congruent, similar and congruent triangles and angle properties of circles. Now, this is this is the question that I was supposed to solve in the last video, but uh, I decided not to because then the video would have been really wrong. So I'm going to solve it in this one. Okay, so this is from October, November 2018, paper two, variant two, and this is question number 10. So it says here, the diagram shows two circles that touch at C. A, B, and C are points on the small circle, center X. C, D, e are, C, D, and E are points on the large circle, center Y. A, X, C, Y, E, and B, C, D are straight lines, and Y, D, E equals to X degrees. Prove that triangle B, C, X. So I'm gonna highlight the triangle that, uh, as I read along, B, C, X is similar to triangle DCY. Okay, now before before I start proving that these two triangles are similar, what you should do is that first have a good look at the question, okay? Don't worry about proving them similar right away, but first get an idea of the properties that are being used here. And then once you have a fair idea, once, uh, once that's understood, or once you've figured that out, then you'll be much, uh, it'll be a lot easier to prove that yes, these two triangles are in fact similar. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do right now. Okay. Now, these two triangles are gonna be isosceles triangles, okay? Now, why is that? Is it is it is it my assumption that these two triangles are gonna be isosceles triangles because they look isosceles? Or do I, know, do I know that for a fact? No, the answer is I know that for a fact. Why? Because YD, Y as we know is the center of the large circle, which means that YD and CY are the radii of this large circle and XC and XB are also the radii of the small circle, which means that these two are definitely gonna be equal. Okay, so that's, that's that. Okay, another thing is that this angle that you see here, okay, I'm gonna call it DCY, okay? So angle D, C, Y is going to be the same as angle XCB. Why is that? Let's find out. So the reason for that is the property behind, in fact, it's not exactly a circle property. It's, it's a property that can be applied whenever two straight lines are crossing, is that, that opposite angles or vertically opposite angles are gonna be the same. So the reason behind is that they are vertically opposite. Okay, then, all right. Now, the fact that these two triangles are isosceles, which that basically means that this angle is gonna be the same as angle BCX. Why? Because these are the two sides that are, these are two angles, oh, sorry, that are opposite the two equal sides. And for the same reason, these two are also going to be the same. Now, how exactly do I use this information to prove that these two triangles are in fact uh, similar or to prove that yes, these two angles are in fact equal. And how do I, how exactly do I write it down? That's the challenge, okay. So we've just figured that angle XCB is the same as angle DCY, okay. Now, here's how this works. In, in the second, in the smaller triangle, angle XBC, let me write that down, angle XBC is gonna be the same as angle XCB. And why is that? Because it's an isosceles triangle, okay, as, as I just mentioned. and it doesn't end here. Angle CDY, CDY is going to be the same as angle DCY, DCY. And what's the reason behind? Make sure, see the thing is, the only way through which you can communicate with the examiner is through your solution, okay? So whatever it is that you've thought of just now, we've just, we, we just realized that this is an isosceles triangle, so make sure that you pen that down. So. The reason why I'm saying this is because it's an isosceles triangle. Is this how you spell isosceles? I hope it is. Yeah, so isosceles triangle. Okay, so here's what we've done so far. What we've done is that out of three triangles, we have shown that two of them are the same, two each from both the triangles, okay? So that basically means that the third angle will also be the same and the reason behind is sum of interior angles, okay? Like suppose the, the two angles were, let's say 50-50, okay? So 50-50, 100, and 180 minus 100 is 80 degrees in both the triangles. So here's here's how I'm gonna write that down. So I'm gonna write angle B, X, C is the same as angle C, Y, D. Angle C, Y, D. And the reason you can write because of sum of interior 
angles. Now, one thing that I should have mentioned at the very beginning is that, as I did in the previous video, make sure to have a look at the number of marks. So this is a three mark question, which means you need to read and write three logical statements. Okay, so that's that, that was part A. Now we come to part B. Part B. Now in part B, I've already taken a screenshot because uh, of, the, of this question, okay, and pasted it over here so that I don't have to do a lot of back and forth. Okay, so now this is, from this point onwards, we have angular properties of circles. So it says find in terms of x, d, c, y. Okay, so d, c, y is basically this angle. Now, how exactly do I figure this out? Okay, so here's how I do it. Now, since this angle is x, and since this line is passing through the center, that means that this angle will be 90 degrees. Why? The property is that angle opposite the diameter is 90 degrees. So this remaining part, or you can say angle CDY is gonna be 90 minus X. Now, why exactly did I figure out this angle? Because I know that we're dealing with an isosceles triangle. So whatever angle CDY is going to be, angle DCY will, always, will also be the same. So that means this is equal to 90 minus X. Okay, next you have B, C, B, X, A, sorry. So B, X, A is this angle right here. Okay, so how exactly do I work this out? Let me see. So this angle is 90 minus X, which means that this angle, which is X, C, B, will also be 90 minus X. Now, what exactly is the property that I can use over here? Okay, so this angle, angle B, C, X, is the angle that's at the circumference, which is 90 minus X, and the angle that I'm supposed to state is the angle that's at the center. So angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference, which means this is simply going to be twice of 90 minus X, which is 180 minus 2X. So I'll write it over here, so you know exactly what I've done. So it's 180 minus 2X, all right? So that's that, okay. Next it says, given that BC is equal to 3.5, CX is equal to 3.2, CD is equal to 5.6, find the length of AE. Now, before I do that, I think I should just take, a, I should copy this and paste it over here again. Okay, yeah. So it says here that BC is equal to 3.5, so I'll write it here, 3.5, CX is equal to 3.2, and CD is equal to 5.6. So this right here is 5.6, and you're asked to find the length AE. Now, AE is all of this, okay? Now, this may sound confusing at first, but remember that you're dealing with a circle and a bunch of isosceles triangles also. So first things first is that this length is also going to be 3.2 because this is also the radius of the same circle. And whatever CY is, YE will also be the same because Y is the center and C is the diameter. So in order to figure out AE, if I can just somehow figure out CY or YE, then I'll know, if I figure out CY, I'll know what YE is and then I can just simply sum them up in order to have the length that starts from A and goes all the way to E. Now, what exactly is the piece of information that I need to use here? That's the, that's the real question. What I have to use here is the fact that triangle BCX is similar to triangle DCY. Okay, so I'll write it over here. Triangle BCX is similar to triangle DCY. Oops, sorry about that. Yeah, okay. So what do I do now? I make ratios. So BC, upon DC, and this is something that you do whenever you have a pair of similar triangles. I do have an introductory video on similar triangles, so you guys can go check it out. CX upon CY is equals to BX upon DY. Now, once you've done this, start placing the lengths that you know already. So I know that the length from B to C is 3.5. D to C is 5.6. CX, let me see what CX is. CX is 3.2. CY is something I don't know. BX is, will also be 3.2, but that's kind of irrelevant, isn't it? Yeah, because I just need to figure out CY, and once I do that, that should be enough. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna cross multiply. So when I do that, CY times 3.5 is equal to 3.2 times 5.6. So CY is gonna be equal to 3.2 times 5.6 divided by 3.5, so I'm looking at 5.12. Now, don't get carried away, 5.12 is just this bit, okay? Which means that this will also be 5.12, as I mentioned earlier, they're both the radii. So 5.12 times two plus 3.2 times two. So what you have now is 16.64, which is AE. Now, let me show you what I'm talking about. So this is the length that we are supposed to find out, AE. I'll highlight it also and we just did. So yeah, 
So you're, you're likely to find questions like these in paper two, and this is a fairly recent question, October, November, 2018. So make sure that you guys practice this concept very well. And although angle properties of circles is a concept that's usually tested in paper one, but when it comes in, comes in paper two, so it's tested along, along with a lot of other concepts also. So yeah, and uh, that's, that's all for this video. See you guys in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.